Hey guys, before we get into the topic uh, that is equanimity, I wanted to wish you Happy New Year 2021. 2020 was quite uh, tough. Uh, we don't know yet how will be 2021. However, I think it's important that we keep in mind that we survive to this year and we get out of it stronger. So for 2021, I don't think I don't believe in resolutions because it never works work but I think it's important that we uh, maybe can trust more and flourish more our uh, resilience and creativity because thanks to those two elements we can face challenges and obstacles that actually we cannot imagine uh, so now about the video uh, it's the second part about eco anxiety so uh, if you want maybe to know a little bit more about globally what is equal anxiety i advise you to check uh, the first video and in this one we will be focusing about the coping strategies uh, i also invite you to uh, subscribe to the channel to like this video if you find it useful if you also share it with people and whenever you're ready let's start the video So today we will go a bit deeper into what is eco-anxiety to not only understand how to cope with this but also how to reverse it into climate action. Indeed, fighting against climate change, getting involved into climate action seem to be the best things to do in order to fight this eco-anxiety. Most of us are aware about the current situation we are facing right now, climate change. However, what makes that some people are more affected to this situation than others at the mental health level, such as eco-anxiety? One first possible explanation is the distress or stress of not only knowing that climate change is a threat, but actually feeling that climate change is a threat. Indeed, knowing is sometimes not enough to act. We can, for example, choose to ignore or to do nothing about it. However, despite feeling can bring some motivation to act against climate change, we can also fall into distress. It's where, for example, the eco-anxiety can kick in. One aspect explaining why eco-anxiety can be challenging in the first place can be seen as a cultural or educational problem. This, especially in Western countries, where we are usually not educated to express and acknowledge our feelings or emotions. This, even more in terms of negative emotions. And even more if you're a boy or a man, rather than if you're a girl or a woman. Being emotional or sensitive is usually a synonym of weakness. We must work on ourselves, we must be tough and hide those emotions, even if we forget that being emotional also means being kind, caring, empathetic and even creative. Another explanation that can show why it's difficult to acknowledge our feelings and especially the negative one is this common or popular fear about the fact that if we start to open up too much, we might fall into a no way out and then making things even worse. But actually, if this acknowledging feelings things is well made, it actually can have some beneficial effects on the mental, but also physical health. So now, before trying to understand better why it's so important to learn how to cope with those feelings that are linked with eco-anxiety. Let's see a bit deeper into what is stress 
Because we use stress every day, usually as something negative. However, stress is a part of who we are and our biology. So it has probably some important role into our everyday life. So let's see a bit deeper about it. So first, what's stress? So stress, it's a response of our organism to a stressor such as an environmental condition. Stress is the body's method of reacting to a condition such as threat, challenges, or physical and psychological barrier. So to sum up, we can say that stress is anything altering our balance. By this definition, we now can understand that stress can have a vital role into a healthy, balanced lifestyle. The specialist decided to give specific name depending on what kind of stress we can be experiencing and what can be their effects on our health. So the first one is, for example, you stress. That is the stress that you can be experiencing when you are excited and when there when there are no fears or dangers. It's, for example, when you are competing for a promotion at work, going on a first date, or riding a roller coaster. So basically, you stress is the type of stress that keeps us feeling alive and being excited about life. So now let's talk about the type of stress that we are usually talking about when we say stress. It is the acute stress or the bad stress that comes from a quick um, surprise that needs a reaction. It is not necessarily a bad stress as long as we manage to relax quickly. If for some reason we cannot reach this relax modus fast, this type of stress can become um, stronger and turn into chronic stress. Chronic stress occurs when we are facing stressors that impact us a lot and feel inescapable. For example, a stressful job, unhappy home life, fear for climate. Because our bodies are not designed for chronic stress, we do not manage to reach a balanced state we can face negative effects, both physical and emotional, if we experience chronic stress for a long period of time. The issue with chronic stress is that our body doesn't really differentiate a danger that is physical, for example, a lion that is going to chase you, or, for example, going to work and facing a boss that is uh, a jerk. In a stressful situation, no matter the source being physical or abstract, our body will secrete different types of molecules, such as adrenaline or cortisol. Adrenaline has the effect of concentrating the blood flow from the extremities to large muscle groups that will allow us to run from this incoming danger. Cortisol has the effect of decreasing our immune system but also inhibit the growth and the development of our nervous system. This is, uh, for example, the reason that uh, during epidemics, for example, during the current corona epidemics, it's really important to take care of your mental health in order to keep your immune system good enough to face the virus. The key to cope with our eco-anxiety relies on developing and combining our emotional resilience with our emotional health care. The emotional resilience, it's our capacity to calm down our mind after encountering a negative experience. Our emotional health care is focusing on being in tune with our emotions, vulnerability, and knowing when we need to take a break. So I found useful information thanks to the Australian Psychological Association. However, it was quite dense. So in order to simplify um, our topic, I decided to group those coping strategies into three categories that are uh, relationships, actions, and internal work. 
as internet work is quite important and dense and I didn't want to make a video too long I decided to talk today about the first two categories that are relationships and actions and we will have a third video that will be focusing only about internal work. As human beings, our relationships with others can have a powerful effect in helping us to cope with life challenges. Social support can help us to feel heard and cared for and improve our psychological well-being and reduce distress during difficult times. This can be done, for example, by providing people with alternative ways of thinking about or dealing with a stressful situation. But then, where can we find support? If you are experiencing some anxiety, insomnia, fear or any other mental health related issues, you should not hesitate to talk about it with your doctor or a specialist. Sadly, we still have the common belief that only seriously ill people need to get mental health support. However, we need to give as much importance to our mental health as we do for our physical health. If you get a nasty cut, you need to treat it so it does not get infected and you can heal. Despite the first signs of an unbalanced mental health are not always visible, and especially because we are not educated to see them, we usually decide to act when the problem has become so important that it is becoming clearly physical. Also, if you feel stuck in your life and you need some guidance, you can also consider to work with a life coach who can help you with your life objectives. It is, for example, possible to get support from your work. If you know someone that you have a good professional relationship with, you can consider asking him or her to be your mentor. This person can help you to go through your work and even giving you some strategic advice. You can also try to get some support from people very close to you. You can share your concerns, thoughts and feelings about climate change with friends or colleagues that you trust. But even better, why not looking for a group of people that share your values for the environment and with who you can exchange and learn from each other and even get involved into climate action. One possible side effect of eco-anxiety is creating even more isolation from others. This is why it's very important to try to keep a connection or contact with others to share about your feeling that you have about climate change, else it might create a kind of dark spiral that makes it even more difficult to get out of it and to reverse this eco-anxiety into climate action. When we talk about climate action, the first important step is actually educating ourselves about what is exactly climate change and what are the potential solutions to fight global warming. One easy first step is actually to calculate your carbon footprint. Then you can see what of your activities contribute the most to greenhouse gas emissions. From this, you can then try to change your behavior in order to get a more responsible lifestyle. As we saw in the first category, that was relationship, going from acting individually to as a group can make your voice being more heard. You can suggest green actions within your group, of, at school, at work, sport club, your religious spiritual group, or in your neighborhood or in your building. Here are four key elements regarding climate action within your community. By acting within your community, you underline that climate change is personal. It affects you and I. It's happening right now, here, and not only in the near future. By acting, you can also create some new social norms. You make it possible in making your pro environmental behavior very visible, so people will notice. Highlighting the satisfaction of engaging in a greener behavior is one way of making the reward more visible 
and then more likely to be copied. Internal and self-motivating reasons for doing things are much more influential than external rewards and benefits. A group is also more likely to become engaged on an issue when their valued group also cares about it. By raising awareness within your community, you can create an impact and therefore it becomes much easier to pressure your local leaders to take more actions against climate change. And now this is the end of this second video about eco-anxiety. I hope you liked it. It was quite a lot of work to gather and reorganize and select uh, the most important information. As I said before, there will be a third video that will be dealing about the third category of uh, coping strategies related to equal anxiety, that is internal work. So for now, if you have enjoyed this video, feel free to give a like, to subscribe, to share it in your social media or with people that would be interested by the topic. And for now, Jens Kodai and Riktik Kodak or Ipke or this is still the next video.